in our fast-paced world, uh, we, we tend to run here and there and everywhere just to kind of make ends meet at times, to get kids off to school, to get them to whatever sport or whatever activity it is that they're doing. And we tend to just run around pretty much with our heads cut off a lot of times. Our world is very fast-paced. We tend to lean a lot on fast food and big box type stores that uh, we use to feed our families, for lack of a better term. You all know who they are. Uh, they're all the, the ones that you see down a roadway, and there's four or five all within very close proximity, and it's all, nothing's really good for you. That has led our population to kind of become that famous couch potato, where we turn to kind of our comfort things, our comfort foods, whatever that case is, and we sit down at the end of the day and kind of just veg out. Well, we also have taken that a bit further, even with our phones and the way that we are living our lives with the ease of uh, access to internet and computers and those type of things. And we really find ourselves continuing this sitting trend, not only at home, eating our favorite comfort foods, but also in our businesses as well, or even on the way to our businesses. We've got this uh, everyday media thing is, is all around us right now. What that has led us to is a big detachment from our food chain. Most folks don't realize where their food comes from. Folks even consider that the uh, Walmart or a big box store or whatever is the source of all of their food. I'll talk a bit more about this in a second. But we as our modern society have come reliant too heavily on somebody else for ourselves. Well, why is that important in a video about defending yourself? Well, physical fitness is something that you really need to take some time to factor into that plan. Also, you need to be relying on yourself to source your own food. So many of us out there will go to the store to buy things when we forget about the bountiful supply of food that's all around us. Things like mushrooms, uh, wild edibles even going out and doing some, whether it be large game or small game hunting, to procure meat for our family's food table. Most folks think that, and some even go a little bit too far with this, and think that the meat actually comes from the store. I'll never forget a video that I had seen one time, it was a newsreel, and the meat was sold out in that given store. Well, the girl that was being filmed actually asked the butcher, Hey, go back and just make some more. Well, most people would realize that that's not possible. For folks that are and only ever have been in a true and urban environment, a large city, there's a good chance that they really do believe that's where they're going to get their meat from, is that they can go in the back of the store and just whip up meat. Well, most of us realize that that's not possible. To have some sort of a familiarity with hunting, be it by bow or gun or whatever, that is something that we really need to spend some time on and factor into a, a long-term or even a short-term bug-out scenario, or if it's a scenario that you're kind of all of a sudden caught up within, and it's something that happened very quick, and you've got a very minimalist-style kit with you. So we really do need to change the way that we look at our food and think about our food more as a more wholesome thing, more as a a more natural thing, I guess, is what I'm trying to say, and not so much dependent on all of these junk food things that are out there. So in defending yourself, fitness is going to be a big thing. The choice of food that you make is going to go far into building in a good lifestyle and a good habit that will then further the other things that we are going to discuss later on in this video. So we need to reattach to that nature environment and get back to the basics of kind of being a good primitive style man and being able to source our own things and not so dependent on somebody else to do that for us. We need to reconnect. Why is that important? Well, how well right now could you defend yourself against some sort of a physical attack? Is it something that you practice for? Is Do you maybe have you done a combatives program of, of any sort? Are you involved in a uh, martial arts system of some sort or do you walk around that proverbial you've got your bubble 
and nobody's allowed in the bubble, and you think that because you're in your bubble that you're safe from any would-be attacker. Do you find yourself walking the street alone by choice, maybe, or not so much of a choice, because of where your job takes you in those hours of the day that it takes you there? Is that something that you should consider, and does it put you in a higher probability of a potential attack? The other thing that I find kind of, uh, I hate to say comical, but something that truly is an issue, cell phones. I see so many folks walking out into traffic, um, not paying attention to anything around them because they have their face buried into their cell phone and they're not being aware at all about their surroundings. That's something that you really need to take stock in and take notice of. Be aware of what's around you. Always watch your six. That's a very important thing to remember. That comes directly back to our physical fitness. Are you in shape? Do you have some sort of a physical fitness program that you're currently engaged in? Can you run? Can you carry a 40 or 50 pound sack on your back? Can you defend yourself if you find yourself attacked? I'm not asking you to become a Terminator, but you do need to take the opportunity to kind of make yourself lean and trim and not be that couch potato. If war were to come to your country right now, could you leave that area where the war is? Or whatever natural or man-made disaster or t act of terrorism, whatever that case is. Most of the roadways are going to be clogged, so you're going to have to find a different way to get outside of that urban environment that you found yourself within. Those are things that you need to factor in to a long-term plan. Not only good eating habits, but good fitness habits. Think about pirates. You know, what, what's the classic pirate term? You know, you're going to go out and loot, pillage, and plunder, and, and other things, but we'll just keep it G-rated for now. Think about those type of people that would be out there in that environment. And again, it comes back to how well can you defend yourself in that situation? Do you have some sort of gunfighting skills? Are you proficient in hand-to-hand -hand combat? Do you have a plan that will not so much turn you into that special operations fighter, but at least make you a little bit more of a hard-to-get target if you need to be and if you want to be? Remember this too, folks. Um, something that I kind of talk to my students in martial arts about. Even... The, the special forces guys, whatever you want to call them, you, you pick the branch service, all, all great folks, uh, hats off to them, uh, very, very impressed by the skill sets that they have. But that skill set, and if you ask some of the guys that are there doing that, they're going to tell you this. We're doing the basics. We're just doing the basics at a more refined, higher level. And if you think about it, as long as you've got good basics underneath you, and have that in your skill set, that is something that you can continue to refine and get better at as time goes on. You're not doing anything above that. You're doing the basics. I have a photo here of a knife. Is that something that you are proficient in as well? Do you have good knife skills? Remember that with knives or axes, tomahawks or throwing knives, whatever, whatever it is that you want to consider, that knife or whatever cutting instrument never will run out of bullets. As long as you maintain it well, it will always be there to perform for you. It's a very good thing to kind of consider in that environment. So if you look at modern FBI kind of law enforcement data and statistics, they've kind of narrowed down, and, and we do this in law enforcement a lot, just to formulate our own uh, whatever you choose to call it, use of force control continuum or reaction to force, whatever buzzword of the day that it is that whatever your agency is or an agency around you uses, they have some sort of a kind of a buzzword for that. If you look in outside of law enforcement and more of what are the common types of physical assaults, the FBI has kind of narrowed down a list of what kind of the 10 most common physical assaults type look like. Most of these are based on a male-to-male -male style of, uh, of an aggressor versus victim or mutual combatants, however you choose to want to look at that. And the first one is kind of a push to the chest followed by a punch to the head. 
do you have some sort of a skill set that can help you defend in that? And if not, that's something that we're going to discuss in, a, uh, in the next video. Number two would be a swinging punch to the head, just your, your basic haymaker style of a shot to the head. And uh, most of these assaults are going to try to be something towards the head. The, the next, and this is number three, is a grab to the front lapel where they would then pull you in to follow by a punch to the head. And again, do you have some way to get out of that or to have that within your plan? The thing that you need to really consider in all of these is with each one of these attacks, uh, there's something called hypervigilance that will start to set in. If I don't have a plan on how to get out of whatever it is that, that I'm getting ready to be encountered with, my brain goes into what they would call a mental stall. And that stall is where then time starts to set in and your brain is very rapidly trying to produce an answer for a solution that it probably has never been exposed to before. When you get involved in some sort of a martial art or combatives program, and I, I really don't care what it is, just get involved in something. Um, even get some buddies and just get involved in something, however it is that you need to make this work. Once you've kind of formulated that plan in your head, that reaction time starts to shorten. And that's really what you want to do is shorten that time so you don't get stuck in your hypervigilance and then get a mental stall. If you get a chance to look at some of the human force factors and then things like SNS or activation or even uh, other things of that nature or the OODA loop, whatever you want to call it, it's all kind of based around the same thing. Something that I tell a lot of my students is, is, you know, there's a reason why a lot of folks, when they um, are in a near-death experience, they say, oh, I saw my whole life flash in front of my eyes. Well, there's actually a medical reason for that, and it has a lot to do with this. And is what it is, is the brain is very rapidly looking for an answer, kind of like somebody's up in your head looking through the Rolodex of things that you've done in your life to see if any one of those things matches up with what the current situation is. So... We want to expose ourselves to things to try to lessen that time. Okay, number four, guys, is that two-handed grab to the chest or to the lapel or even to body armor, followed by a headbutt. Again, that's something that you need to kind of prepare for. This is all stuff that's come directly out of the FBI Top 10, and that's something that I just want to expose you to in the next video that will be a companion to this. I'm actually going to show you some of these and show you some basic things that you can do to get out of that. It's not an end-all be-all. It's a starting point. It, it's just me opening the door. Number four would be a choke followed by a knee to the groin. A very common place that you see that is kind of in sexual assault type cases or those type of things where if a female is being choked by a male, a great defensive counter to that is just bring the knee straight up to the groin that's a pretty sensitive part of the body and most folks male and female that have ever been struck there kind of realize hey that's a pretty sensitive part of the body that's something that i can use to my advantage and that's what a lot of a good self-defense system is is i just want to know what causes myself pain and then use that to my advantage six and as you saw the photo the bottle to the head that broken beer bottle with the fight that starts at the bar all of a sudden that bottle that they were drinking out of becomes a very quick weapon of opportunity they smash it on the bar you've all seen it in the movies and all of a sudden the bottle's broken over a head or whatever the case is so a bottle to the back of the head is a strong possibility or any blunt object like that um, again, these come from FBI, so that's stuff that they've seen common in, in bar fights. It's all too commonplace. Um, number seven is a groin or a lower leg kick. That's very common as well. Back to the bottle with eight, broken bottle to the face, which means that they've broken the bottle and then utilize that bottle as a improvised cutting tool. Knives. You always got to be on the lookout for knives, guys. Knives in a hand of somebody even moderately skilled will do massive amounts of damage. 
and there's a good chance that you probably didn't even see it coming. So those are things that you, again, need to familiarize yourself with because in a grid down style of uh, situation or whatever it is that you want to call it, knives are going to be very prevalent and be almost everywhere. And that's something that really on the road uh, with my job causes a lot of fear for myself just because knives are uh, pretty scary when you get down to, to the root of what they do. I mean, they cut if they're a good one and they're well maintained. They're going to cut deep and they're going to cut quick and they don't need to be reloaded. Like I already had said, they, uh, they're just there and they're going to keep on working. Number 10 of our top 10 most common is going to be a headlock of some type or some type of a grappling headlock. And that could be either standing or in a ground type of a situation. It doesn't take long where you might start to experience the loss of blood to the brain, starting to feel woozy and pass out. If this is a ground situation, is what I tell most of my ground combative guys, is if you've got a ground fight that's going to go over, really, let's say, 30 seconds, and you're not in decent shape, you're going to start losing that battle really, really fast. So, again, it comes back to the first part of the video. Do you have good fitness? Do you have a plan do you know some basic self-defense and some basic gunfighting style of skills? And what are you doing right now to prepare yourself for that in the event that you need to put these skills into play? And it doesn't have to be some sort of a crazy grid down, bug out type of a situation. It could just be you're going to work some morning and all of a sudden there is somebody that's looking to encounter you and they see you as weak. And they try to take whatever it is that they want at that given time. So that's why we're going to look at these things a bit further in the next video. The purpose of this video was just to get you asking yourself where you're at. And I don't want any answers. I just want you to think about where it is that you're at. So as always, guys, I appreciate you watching the video. I thank you again for all the recent subscriptions. And I want you to remember this always. Remember to keep your knives sharp and your go bags close. Until next time, guys, this is Tim with Two Feather Survival. Thanks for watching. <laughs>